All right, Sockmaster fans, continuing with this double DVD here, we're going to watch Vault of Horror. Let's check it out. The movie starts with five strangers getting into an elevator, different floors, and it takes them to the sub-basement, which is not where they, any of them wanted to go. When they find they can't get out, they sit down for a drink and they talk about dreams. Mysterious. Unworldly. Almost unbelievable. Yeah. That's where she lives. Guy hired this guy to find his sister. I didn't like the town at all. Something strange about it. And he's going to kill the guy who found his sister. Turns out his sister got an inheritance from their father. She gets it all if she's alive. He gets nothing, so he's going to kill him and then kill his sister. He stops her by eating a restaurant where the sister lives. You can't close before 7 o'clock at night. It's getting dark. We always close before dark. They come out in the dark. Dark here. He finds his sister. Because of them. Them? There have been 17 cases so far. What is found with every drop of blood drained out of them. Well, he immediately kills his sister. If she's dead, he inherits it all. When he goes back into that town, he sees that the restaurant is open, even though they said they were going to close. And there's people eating, so... When you kill your sister, you work up an appetite. But the red soup they, he's served doesn't taste right to him. What is it? Oh, it tastes rather... Strange. Well, he spits it out when he finds out that they're serving blood clots for dinner. And then a mirror is opened up, and nobody has a reflection in there except him. Yes, it's a city of vampires, and remember that sister that he killed? They've got some fresh blood tonight, right from the tap. Do you want to call it? Terry Thomas then takes his turn and tells his dream. Very peculiar indeed. His new wife, played by Glennis Johns. I go for magazine just there. Darling, you must admit it looks nicer. Move the He's a neat freak and doesn't like things out of place. She even changed the underwear drawer. What are they doing in my drawer? I moved your things to your side of the bed. But my underpants have always been in the second drawer on the left, folded double, and buckles on the top. He shows how neat he is in the basement. All my things neatly filed away. Nails, size, length, screws, size, kind, thread, diameter. I knew with markers. No tomato puree, no spaghetti sauce. Nothing! I must have forgotten. But there's no excuse to forget! She oh, cannot do God. anything right for this guy. I want an evening he's gone, but he's gonna be back in like 15 minutes, and then she had a watermark on the table that she's gotta clean off quickly before he gets home. And suddenly she just can't do anything right again. Everything is spilling, falling. She's up against the clock here. Picture falls off the wall. It's not going to hang as easily as she hopes. Ella! She's busted. I, I wanted to hang a picture. I came down to the mail. You messed up my whole house. Can't you do anything neatly? Can't you? Can't you do anything neatly? Can't you do anything neatly? <laughs> She can do something neatly. She has neatly placed all of his body parts in jars. And that's how this story ends. Our third story is this guy. He's a magician himself, a performer, and he's exposing this guy in India, I guess he is. Rude. Then he sees a rope trick and he cannot figure out how it's done. And he wants it for his own act. How much? How much 
show you what for a trick. Name your price. There is no trick. The magic is in the rope. She refuses to sell him the trick, or the rope, what, the magic. So uh, he invites her to his room so he can show his wife under the guise that she's ill and she needs to see this. Instead, he plans to kill her and steal the trick. They try it out, it works when he blows in the flute. His wife climbs the rope. She disappears, but a blood stain follows. The rope then comes down, starts whipping him, and then wraps around his neck and kills him. As he hangs there, the woman that he killed, very much alive. See what happened? I'm quiet. Fourth story. It begins in a graveyard. The guy has been buried, buried alive. alive. How did it happen? It's a surefire plan, Alex. Now this will cut down my pulse and heartbeat, my entire metabolism, so that even the best doctor will think that I'm dead. It's an insurance scam. And once you've collected the insurance money, friend Alex, I shan't need you anymore. I think he's going to be double-crossed. Meanwhile, we have two medical I'll students. The anatomy, Fritz. Hmm. Trouble is, we can only work in the dissection room for the short periods we're assigned to it. Mm. <laughs> only we had a body of our own. We get some flashback to where the dude died. He happens to live in the same complex where the medical students are. So now they know that somebody has died recently. After he's buried, they hire a guy, bribe a guy, the grave digger, to dig him up. You got the money? After we get the body. They're giving out. Hurry, Alex. Hurry. But Alex is packing a suitcase. He has no intention of getting him. Should be just about waking up now. I wonder how long it'll take before he realizes his friend Alex isn't coming. The two students run for their lives, terrified, and that happens to be the same guy that Alex is, the same time Alex is driving by, and he crashes his car. You can give me the money now. It's all yours. Sorry about the aid. Which leads to our fifth and final story. Mine begins on an island. A tropical island. The island of Haiti. He's a painter, and he found out by whom? his paintings have sold for big bucks. In his gallery, he sold it on behalf of Lawrence Delton. But why such a price? Your pictures. They've been highly praised by no less an art critic than Fenton Breedley. The guy told him his paintings were worthless, or not what that do you valuable. Wish? To buy voodoo. Why? To get revenge? Now what? So he gets them. Why get a little doll to stick pins in you are an artist. You don't need dog. He rips up a drawing he just made of a vase. Turns out he has a power. Anything he draws can be damaged. To test it out, he immediately draws a piece of bread that he has to tossed on the floor, and then he erases a part of it. Sure shit, here comes our mouse, or rat to chew that part away. He fell out of bed in the night and cut his face. Now, as luck would have it, bad luck, he happened to have been creating a self-portrait recently, and he put a little scuff mark on it the night before. So he flies back to London to get his revenge, puts his self-portrait in a safe where it's, um, well, safe. You buy cheap. You sell beer. These are the three guys that cheated him. And pay a critic to tell lies so you can do it. No. You cheated me, all three of you. And I'm going to have revenge. 
So he immediately paints portraits of all three of them. You will never see another picture again. To the art critic that says this stuff wasn't that valuable. He's cheating wife. on his wife. We're living in the 20th century now. You'll never see another woman again. To the art dealer. The third guy he decides to visit personally. Now the guy pulled a gun on him because he realized something's up. Nonetheless, he's able to draw this. And some mysterious force, of course, makes him put the gun on himself. Moments later, he realizes he's getting really hot. And he starts thinking about his own portrait is inside of a safe, sweltering. He manages to get home in time, rescue himself, figures safe's not a good place, so let's just keep it on display here. But then he leaves to go retrieve his watch, which he left in that guy's office, and then the painter is outside. You think that our fears be a sort of warning? A warning of what may happen. The elevator door that brought them there then magically opens up and takes them to a graveyard. Four of them walk ahead and disappear. Let's talk about Vault of Horror. I was looking back at my list. I believe I first got this movie in May of 1986. I rented it and copied it from a place called City News and Video in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Great video store. And I actually watched this movie with my fellow Schlockmeister Jeff uh, the night I got it or shortly thereafter. Um, it's an anthology uh movie uh, put out by Amicus. I think yesterday when I did Tales from the Crypt, I thought it was Hammer, but that was totally wrong. Uh, it's actually Amicus. And this was actually not the follow-up to Tales from the Crypt, but the second follow-up. Um, Asylum was on before that. In fact, I'll probably review Asylum uh, in the next few weeks or so. I plan to review like eight or nine more anthologies in the next couple, couple of weeks. So be ready for those. But anyway, Vault of Horror, uh, five stories again, uh, about 15, 16 minutes long each one. Uh, shit, I can't even remember what the first one was. Uh, I know the second story was the one about, uh, oh, the first one was about the vampires, the guy who killed his sister and then was in a vampire town and got killed himself. The second story was Eleanor, Terry Thomas, uh, Glennis Johns. Uh, he, she can't do anything right for him and she ends up killing him with a hammer and putting his, every, his body parts in jars. Uh, the third story, I think, was the one about the trick, the rope trick. Um, and, um, they killed that uh, Indian woman to get her rope trick, and then the rope turned on them and killed them both, and then the Indian woman was back alive again. The fourth story uh, was one that probably I remember the most, uh, was the one where the, there was an insurance scam. The guy was going to pretend he was dead, buried alive, and then they, his friend would dig him up, but his friend never did dig him up. I remember the night I watched this originally, when he sprung out of that coffin <laughs> screaming, Alex, and the hair on the other guy's uh, heads went flying backward. That was hilarious, and it still is to this day. Uh, that's a good, really good story. And of course, the final story was about the painter in Haiti who uses voodoo to get revenge on the people who wronged him and told him that his paintings were not very valuable, so they undercut him, sold him for a much higher price, so he got revenge on all three of those, and eventually uh, he died as well. So, And then it turns out um, all, all five of these guys apparently have to retell this story every night over and over again for eternity, and that's how our movie ends. So anyway... Uh, again, Vault of Horror, really good. I really like both of these. Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror are both really good good films. Um, I like them. I think uh, in both cases, they took these stories directly from some Tales from the Crypt comic books. In fact, there was a scene in this movie where they actually showed a guy reading the Tales from the Crypt book. And if you look closely, you could see some of the pictures from... Uh, 
from the from the movie actually on there uh, on the on the novel he was reading the paperback he was reading. But anyway, that is uh, Vault of Horror. And good stuff. Uh, great, uh, great movies. I just recommend you get both of these. In fact, there's a link to Amazon down below if you're looking for this right now. As I say this, it's only $14.99 on Amazon. So it's a great Blu-ray to grab and at a very good price. So check it out. Click that link and buy it for yourself and enjoy these. Uh, this is something you can just watch over and over again. It's fun. Check them out. Vault of Horror. Watch it. Bye. Highly recommended.